Hello everyone. So today I want to talk to you about an article I just came across and it has to do with something that I was asked about recently. So recently I was asked um, as a comment on one of the videos uh, about the NAATI. NAATI, I guess. I, actually, I, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, it stands for... What does it stand for? The National Accreditation Authority for Translators and Interpreters, NAATI. And this is for Australia. Basically, it, it, basically it's an association uh, for translators and interpreters in Australia. And I was asked if it was worth joining one of these uh, organizations. And so I gave my two cents and basically said my conclusion was that unless you are guaranteed a job or you are asked about it re repeatedly that it probably isn't worth it. Um, let me go through this quickly. Basically, if you live in Australia and you think you're going to work with, say, government entities or other select local companies or organizations, you know, who say that they want someone who's certified by NAATI or NATI, then, uh, then yes, then it might be worth it because you are basically guaranteed a job after that or you notice that it does open a lot of doors. But if that's not the case, then the fact is it's a big world out there. And if you're a translator, you're, you're targeting people from two different countries at least. If you translate from English into French, then you have, and you're in Australia, you have Auster Australia, and but you also have France. Not to mention you have all these other places that speak at least English. So if, you know, you can be targeting people who need uh, translations in New Zealand or obviously the United States and, uh, you know, and the UK and, uh, you know, any place that speaks English, Canada, whatever. So you, um, basically it's a big world out there so to put in a lot of effort and cost into getting accredited by the NAATI might not be such a good idea. If you're targeting law firms in the U.S., they've never heard of this NAATI. If you're targeting organizations in Europe, they've also never heard of it. It doesn't mean anything to them. You know, if you say I'm accredited by this company, they're like, well, accreditation sounds good, I guess, but that's literally all they're going to know about it, right? So... I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Obviously, if, if it's convenient for you to take and you don't mind the cost and the effort, sure, go ahead. But otherwise, I generally say that unless you're guaranteed a job after or you've repeatedly asked about it, like more than once someone has asked if you are uh, certified uh, by that particular organization, then it's not worth taking. By the way, these organizations exist everywhere. In the, in, in the States, it's the ATA but the UK has its own version. Pretty much every country has its own version for their own set of languages. So, um, but that's the problem, right? Because when you're dealing with clientele, they can be from another country. And if they're not in the translation world, chances are they don't even know. Most people in the US have never heard of the ATA or they don't know that it stands for American Translated Association because they're not in the translation world, right? And if I'm dealing with a law firm or somebody who makes websites, they don't know what it is and so, they don't really care about it. Um, I also have a something, I mean, this might affect how I feel about it, but uh, when I was in Taiwan, when I, when I got there, shortly after I got there, I had to have this official document translated because I was living there. And um, so I needed to find someone who was accredited by a state organization to translate it. So I found this girl who, uh, who was able to do it. I already worked with some translators who were local, but they weren't accredited by the state, so I couldn't use them. But I did find this girl who was able to translate it, and then she sent it back. But I noticed right when she sent it back that it seemed kind of sloppy. Uh, just, I mean, just with the formatting, the way she had done it, it looked sloppy. Uh, so I sent it, actually, to one of my translators. And I was like, can you look over this and tell me what you think? And my translator wrote back and said, you cannot send this to the, you know, you have to change it. And, and she showed me where to make the changes, basically, and, and, and gave it to me correctly. So I sent it back to the one that I had paid, you know, to the accredited one, the one who's accredited by the state. And she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you need to make those changes. So it's, it's a good thing I'd sent it to have it looked over by someone else. But all that goes to show you that just because they're accredited by one of these organizations or by the state does not necessarily mean that they're the best translator. Um... So that's how I feel about it. Anyway, this article I read is that after around, after I think 40 years, this NAATI in Australia is going to be, it's going to change the way it works and it's going to be replaced starting next year. I think in, uh, yeah, January 18th. So basically early next year. And um, 
So what do I think about it? Well, my point of view hasn't changed, once again, whether it's worth it or not to take it. I do know there are some changes that they mention here. First of all, there's not, it won't be a permanent accreditation. I think this is good. I think accreditation should not be permanent and it should have to be renewed. I know a lot of, um, like the more important professions already require this. If you're a doctor, you can't just go to med school and then that's it because you have to constantly be updating. And I, and I think it will happen more and more and more and more industries, if you will, that you need to keep educating yourself just to keep up. Let's face it, if you graduated more than, I don't know, three years ago, a lot, if not most of what you learned is already out of date. And because we live in a fast paced world and we're discovering new things, we're discovering new ways to do things. And uh, so we need to keep up. And, and so I do think it's good before. The way it is now is that if you get accreditation, if you, even if you got it 40 years ago, then that's it, you're accredited and that's it. Obviously an accreditation of 40 years ago means very little to, to someone who's hiring and they'd rather see what you've been doing in the meantime. Um, so I, I do agree with that point. However, they also hint, and they always hint at these in various countries at some point in time, that they might make it obligatory. So if you want to be called a translator in Australia, that you might have to be part of this. I don't agree with this, as you can probably tell. And, uh, you know, one reason is the experience I had in Taiwan, basically, that you have someone who's accredited and isn't any good. So I don't necessarily think that it's good. I also think it's just a barrier to entry that people put up. I know, for instance, in Florida, here in the States, in Florida, if you want to become a hairdresser, you have to get accredited by the state of Florida to become a hairdresser, you know, to cut hair. And this is only because a group of people who already are hairdressers decided to come together and lobby their state into making an accreditation for, to, so that hairdressers could be accredited. And it's just a barrier to entry. It just means that they'll get less competition because fewer people will be able to become hairdressers. I don't think, obviously, if it's for something important, like, you know, being a pilot, say, then yeah, of course, it's important to be accredited and to, you know, as, have as many accreditations as you can to be a doctor and all that. That's why you have to jump through so many hoops. But to be a hairdresser, really? Um, so, so, I mean, yeah, so what's the solution? Uh, obviously, we as translators need to be held accountable. We can't just be picking translators here and there and we don't know if they're any good. So how do we find the best way to do that? Now, I've mentioned this before as well. For me, the best way has always been through ratings and referrals. These websites, Translators Cafe, uh, Pros.com, Upwork, all, basically all these websites, they have their own ratings and referrals. So if you want to look up a translator, you can see their willingness to work again or you know how many stars they have next to them or whatever it might be or just written recommendations. These are always very good and I do feel, because they come from all different types of people, different sources, so it's a lot better than just having it from one source, one state exam that you took 15 years ago and, uh, you know, which basically tells us nothing about you. And so I do think that these ratings and referrals are the way to go ahead. If the state wants to get involved or not, I mean, I don't know, I think they'll just complicate the matter. but. If they do want to get involved, I think that's something they should incorporate into it, you know, and say, well, if we have a lot of satisfied customers, then that should, you know, if you want to work for the state and get accredited, then if you do work for the state, for this department, that department, everything, and they're happy with your job, then they should be able to give you ratings and referrals that you can then use. Again, I don't know how they would go about it, and chances are they make it very bureaucratic, I don't know, but I do think ratings and referrals are the best way to see if someone's good or not. And I think you as a translator, if you are a translator, should concentrate on getting these ratings and referrals as quickly as possible because they'll help you in the future with jobs. Once again, NAATI, NATI, however you want to call it, is uh, changing the way it works. I don't necessarily think if you're not already accredited, then I don't think it should affect you all that much because I don't particularly see any reason to uh, to get accredited um, but uh, you know keep it in mind and um, other accreditation authorities might be doing the same things or similar things but as long as they don't change the law and say you can only call yourself a translator if you're accredited then we should be fine by the way another problem with that is say that Australia decides okay if you want to call yourself a translator here in Australia you have to be accredited by them 
Well, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that a lot fewer trans uh, Australians will be able to become translators, but the same number of Americans, Brits, New Zealanders, and everything will still be able to, and they're going to take a lot of the jobs that Australians could, because you're going to have fewer translators in Australia. It's going to cost more for Australians to get this accreditation, especially if they have to give it every year. So that, that means their costs for translation are probably going to step up. And, um, and in the meantime, other people can, uh, can do everything they want. So a lot of Australians, actually, what, what they might end up doing is not take accreditation and just stop marketing towards clients in Australia and just market towards clients abroad because with the web, you can do that just as easily. And uh, that way, they don't need to get accredited. Anyway, so I, th I think it could be a mess if they make this obligatory. But uh, it's still something to keep up with, to keep in mind. Those are just my two cents. It's kind of a rant about accreditation authorities in general. Uh, so let me know if you disagree. Maybe you do. I know a lot of people, I know people can have uh, very strong opinions about this one way or the other. So let me know if you do disagree and the reasons you do disagree. And um, I'm always happy to hear about them. And, uh, and you feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, um, if you like this video, please click like. And don't forget to subscribe because you can get more videos talking about freelance translation, about translation in general, about freelancing right to your computer, desktop, or laptop, or phone, or iPad, or whatever you use. Okay, thanks.